Hello everybody and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts and welcome to a new series on the channel. This one is going to be a lot like our old Taskmaster challenges, except this one is called Shipyard Champions and there's actually quite a few other YouTubers involved. So, make sure you guys check out the other guys. I will try to get links to everybody's channels uh, so that I can include it in the description for you guys, or at least maybe a pinned comment for you guys. But, week number one of Shipyard Champions is right up my alley, as you guys know. Uh, we can choose whatever nation we want. We are up against whatever nation we want. I'm going to just choose France because reasons. We are engaging at 15,000 meters, so 15 kilometers. We get 1930s tech. The enemy gets 1920s tech. We get to build a single battleship to take on one battleship, one battle cruiser, two heavy cruisers, three light cruisers, and five destroyers. The twist is that the battleship I design must be of the least displacement possible. Only the first number is counted on the designer. So theori theoretically, one could design a battleship with a maximum displacement of 150,000 tons while only using 20,000, and the entry would count as 20,000 tons. We can choose our own nation as well as the enemy nation. Unlock halls is not allowed. And you can choose your own weather and time of day if you are playing on version 1.3. Whoever can sink the entire enemy fleet with the least amount of displacement will take the crown for this week. So, without further ado, we are going to be in clear weather daytime so that we have the fewest amount of penalties possible for us. That also means the enemy has fewer penalties as well. We're going to be building one American battleship versus one battleship, one battle cruiser, two heavy cruisers, three light cruisers, five destroyers. So we're going to have to have a pretty solid uh, armament. But we get 1930s tech, so let's get straight into it. Let's go straight into it and see what we can get away with. Now, obviously, we can build anything we want. But the goal is, is, is simple. We take out the enemy. And that is it. The least amount of displacement possible to make that a thing. Now, as much as I would love to just jump straight in the super battleship, I don't think that's our best play. I honestly don't think that any of these are the best play. I think going straight down to modernized Dreadnought could be an okay play. Because... This allows us the smallest hull. But the other thing we need to look at is stability. And I think that that is going to want us to be in the modernized Dreadnought 2. This is the most stable hull. Which means that we're going to have better accuracy overall. Now obviously we're going to take that, that crew training all the way up to veterans, right? Um, we also want to have uh, spacious crew quarters. Okay. Now, what are we going to build? Honestly, I think since we're going up against 1920s ships, having a ship capable of 25 knots should be fine. So let's go ahead and hit 25 knots for this. We can take the range down to minimum. That's not going to hurt us a bit. It's going to save us some, some weight. If we go full oil 2, this is going to save us more weight, right? It's just, just exp expensive. So yes, that saves us more weight. If we go into forced boilers, we can get away with that. Also... We're not worried about the cost, but what we are worried about is the weight. So we want the lightest weight possible. 
and that's going to give us the turbo electric drive. Uh, if we go turbo electric versus gear turbo, actually, I lied. Gear turbines too gives us more. Uh, and I believe, oh yeah, that's right. Turbo electric is only 57 horsepower per engine ton. So while the engine itself would be lighter weight, you're not getting as much engine power. So you need more engine total. So yeah, gear turbines too, definitely the best play here. Okay. Uh, auxiliaries, we, we definitely want all of that that we can get. And then we want electric turning because again that should save us some weight over the electro hydro right yeah so that'll give us really good turning with with uh, not having to worry about too much in terms of the overall weight that it adds so far we're under 20,000 tons but we haven't added anything else to the ship so we definitely want the best armor that we can because that's going to be the, the lightest weight, but also the strongest. So we want to go with that. Uh, definitely want to have... I feel like with the amount of, of destroyers that we're up against, the, the time period means they're going to have decent range as well. How much does this cost us? Okay, that gives us 3,000 tons. We may have to change this before we finish. But uh, we are going to go with all the normal stuff as well, just in case. But we're going to go with all or nothing armor scheme because that's going to save us weight. Normally, I like to go with the turtle back armor because it gives you a little bit more resistance. But all or nothing is probably a good idea as well. All right. So main tower. Let's see what we got. We've got the modern tower. Obviously, that's going to give us the best possible tower. So we want that. Uh, looks like we have to put it right there. Have no choice. For a secondary tower, we want to grab the modern tower again. Uh, we'll put that there for the moment. We may have to change it. For funnels, what can we get away with? Can we get away with a light funnel? We can totally get away with a light funnel in here. Beautiful. Love that. All right, so that allows us to then pull this forward. We may change the location a little bit, but this allows us a better uh, variety of potential. Um, and I think we're going to use this area here for secondaries. We also have quite a few secondary opportunities here as well. So for main guns, we've only got one battleship to deal with. And we could deal with that battleship in many different ways. So for main guns, I think that we should probably get away with like going with maybe these are mark three turrets as well okay so mark three turrets we're starting at fifteen thousand meters i think 14 inch guns would probably be our best bet They're going to have plenty of punching power. They're going to reload in a decent amount of time. I mean, in fairness, the 15-inch guns reload, you know, relatively quickly as well. 73 seconds versus 69. And the 13-inch guns actually are a huge, huge jump in overall rate of fire. That takes us down to a 45-second reload. Hmm. And accuracy overall, 15 thousandths, 5.6 versus 5.9 versus, yeah, it drops off. So I think 14-inch guns are probably going to be our best bet. Let's go straight to 14-inch guns. Now, obviously, the thought process here would be to go with, like, uh, if, if we have a reload of 54.7, uh, yeah, and then this goes to 61, and then this goes to 69. We could throw quad guns on here. But that's also going to make us more inaccurate. If we go to triple barrel guns, then we shouldn't have as big of an issue with accuracy. We get a little bit faster reload, even though it's only 8 seconds. And then we get another reload for 2. I think we go with triple barrel guns. I think we go with the triple barrel 14s. And we go with a pretty standard setup for the, the thing. 
We're not, we could throw another one up here, but honestly, I've got an idea for that. We're going to put a bunch of secondaries on this. Okay. So for secondary turret or for secondary guns, we are going to be utilizing a lot of five inch guns, five inch gun, triple barrel. Give me all of them. Just give me all of them. I don't know why there's a random, <laughs> that's a little odd. I don't think that's supposed to be a thing. But if we put 5-inch guns there, and then we put a 5-inch gun there, and a 5-inch gun there, 5-inch gun there. Okay. We should also have room for a barbette there, which should give us a super-firing barbette average. If we throw that there, then we can throw another five inch gun up there and that gives us a lot of extra firepower for these little little turd burglars that are going to be rushing us okay now we are four weight heavy like significantly uh that's not ideal That is definitely not ideal. Um, hmm. How do we want to? How do we want to approach this? We want this thing to be as accurate as possible. So if we just look down here, base accuracy is good. Long range accuracy is good, but accuracy penalties modifiers here is minus thirty, minus thirty, minus forty, minus thirty nine, and that's think a bad thing if I remember correctly minus 50% gun damage minus 72% torpedo damage plus 148% armor quality fire chance flooding chances reduced significantly flash fire chance is actually quite high all oh, because we don't have the anti-flash the barbettes gotcha okay so that helps cut down on the flash fire chance but we also have we're going to be using incendiary HE and the reason for that is so that we can absolutely ruin the uh, enemy battleship with HE fires with the amount of secondaries we currently have, if we need to. We've got the guns, but we also have the secondaries. Now, for the, um, for the shots that we're going to be shooting, I think going with a semi-ballistic would actually be a good idea. I don't think we need, like, a lot of penetration. But semi-ballistic is going to give us a good option against the battleships, the heavy cruiser, the battle cruiser. Uh, we're going to be able to get those penetrations, uh, I think, at a decent angle. We've got standard shell size. Uh, let's go ahead and get auto-loading turrets. Let's get that done. That's going to make these things reload in 48 seconds. And then these will be reloading in just 8 seconds each. There's going to be a lot of DACA here. There really is. And then, of course, for this, we want to go with, uh, let's go with just straight TNT 4. That cuts down our flash fire chance again. And I know we're extremely front heavy. But I think that that's going to be okay. Let's go stereoscopic rangefinders. We're gonna have uh, sonar, probably a good idea. Radar or radio is not needed, though RDF does give you extra gun aiming speed. And then, of course, Gen 2 radar. Let's go ahead and grab that. Okay. So, can we cheese this? Can we take this and put towards the back of the ship? We cannot. Okay. Um, if, if I get rid of these, can I then put this funnel further back? And that significantly changes our uh, issue that we were having with the engine or the weight 
distribution. Uh, that means we should be able to also change this uh, super firing barbette to being further back. Which will allow us to have an extra couple of turrets since we lost a couple. Okay, these things should be able to work together. I may slide that up just a little bit here, just to give them a little bit extra room. And then we can slide this back a little bit. Which then should allow us to slide this back a little bit. which then should allow us to slide this back a little bit. Let's just make sure we get our secondary set up. Okay, so we got one there. One there, one there, one there. All right, that gives us more secondaries to help with setting fires. Our four weight offset has been fixed quite a bit, so that's good news. All right. Now all we got to do is fix our uh, weight situation. Because if I can get this thing, I don't know if I'm going to win at 40,000 tons displacement. Like, I feel like somebody's going to min-max the crap out of the, their ship. Um, and that's going to allow them to get away with quite a bit of less tonnage. But if we swap a lot of our Citadel armor. That'll shave some weight off of it. Then we go with this. We take this down to 14 inches. 7 inches. 10 inches. And we go with 3 inches. Three inches, two inches. We have 51 caliber 14 inch guns. Which should be decently accurate. We have our four weight offset within range. It's, it's within reason. It's not terrible. We are under the maximum tonnage allowed for this particular uh, hull size. We've got a decent armor belt, decent fore and aft belt. Let's take that down to six. Let's take that up to six just to get that done. We've now got the four weight kind of figured out. Uh, we do not need an eight inch deck. Let's take that down quite a bit. We're going to save quite a bit of weight here. Take that down to like four inches. Um, take this down to like two inches. And then take this down to like two inches. Um, our superstructure. Let's take that down to three inches. And then for this, let's drop this down to like 14 inches. That saves us quite a bit of weight. We are officially under 40,000 tons. And I think we've got a, a ship fully capable of fighting above its above its uh, tonnage. I mean, we have solid main guns. We've got a large amount of secondaries. Uh, I mean, we could definitely throw some more secondaries on here. But are they going to be, like, useful secondaries? I mean, there's definitely room for more secondaries. We could totally, if we wanted to... Go down to like four inch guns. Slap a couple. F uh, I lied apparently. 
You slap a couple of four inch guns on there. Well, I lied. Oh my god, and now we've done it. <laughs> this game. This game likes to troll me with, with accidentally deleting things. It really does. Alright. Um, does that mean we can move this back a little bit? Let's see. No. That is as close as it gets. Uh, but surely we can put like a 3-inch gun there, right? 3-inch guns can go here for sure. And then two inch guns. Yeah, two inch guns can fit around the tower. All right. This is a 35 caliber gun. Just slightly too close. So we'll get rid of it. It's not going to do as much. Honestly, let's just get rid of those. They're not going to do anything other than add weight. They're not going to be that useful during a fight, I don't think. So let's just get rid of them. Don't need them. We've got lots of 5 inch guns that should be able to deal with anything that comes up close. Uh, they're going to be shooting HE. Let's speaking of, let's make sure that we have um, standard ratio for the main guns, maximum HE for the the secondaries. Um, we could probably get away with reducing the ammo because we only have a few. Yeah, like I think we could reduce the ammo. That's going to give us a little bit more weight. Uh, also, go to tube powder, please. That's going to reduce our weight a little bit as well. Don't know why I still had that on there. Our flash fire chance is almost nothing. It's 0.6%, so there's that. Um, 39,543 tons. Should have plenty of, of engine to, to, or plenty of speed to dictate the engagements. Um, what if we take this down to 22 knots? That drops us down to 37,800. Can we get away with a 22 knot battleship? I think we can. I think we can. If we if we do this, we could potentially get away with a 22 knot cuz it's it's 37,800. And the the aim of this challenge is to win with the least tonnage possible. Now again, I fully expect somebody to go full ham and try to win this battle utilizing, you know, a much, much smaller battleship. There are other battleships out there that they could potentially use. Uh, we're going with the Americans, so this is our, our best bet, I think. Small enough. I just hope that I can... I hope that I can win the challenge and uh, at least... Or I, ho I hope I can win the battle, and then when it comes to the challenge, I think we'll be okay. So, I think this is our design. There's nothing else that I'm missing. It is definitely not a compromised battleship, that is for sure. You would think for a challenge like this, you would need to compromise, but 37,000 tons is plenty of displacement to, to get away with what we need. And we should easily be able to handle the, the challenge. Now, this is the first match, so I have no idea what to expect out of my challengers. Uh, are they going to go full, like, min-max, try to get as much firepower for as little displacement as possible? Um, are they going to cheese it with torpedoes? Uh, all of these things could be a potential potential thing, but I think with the amount of fast ships that are out there, I think having uh, just regular battleship design is probably our best bet here, just to make sure that we can complete the challenge. Because if people start min-maxing, there's a chance that they are not f 
capable of finishing the challenge. And at the end of the day, if you do not sink the enemy fleet, you have no chance of winning, regardless of what your tonnage is. And it looks like we've got a pretty sizable battleship and especially battle cruiser with lots of guns. This is a pretty standard looking battleship. This is a uh, formidable looking battle cruiser. Heavy cruisers don't look particularly threatening. Light cruisers don't look threatening. Probably torpedoes spam though. And we can definitely see at least two torpedo launchers here in the middle for the destroyers. So... We're going to have torpedoes, and we spawned firing or going away, which is not ideal. Let's turn this boat around. Speed up. Now, again, there's no time limit. We don't have to worry about any of that. So what we want to do here is to make sure that we're able to uh, win the challenge. We don't want to get ourselves into too much trouble. First shot, first hit already, 1,400 damage and a flood. Love that we're actually hitting stuff right out the gate. Like that gives me a lot of hope with our 14-inch guns. Another massive hit with the 14s. All right, let's start turning in towards these guys. They are officially firing back at us. We've already done significant damage to their battleship. Which is huge. That was why I was, I was worried. That's the one thing I was kind of worried about. It was what their battleships were going to be able to do. They have 14.8 inch guns on their battle cruiser. And they have 15 inch guns on their battleship. So these guys are definitely armed, capable of doing significant damage to us. So we're going to have to be very, very aware Of their shell threat. But as you can see, I mean, we are just absolutely ripping their battleship apart. He may have 15-inch guns, but uh, he doesn't have the accuracy, and he is already gone. Their battleship is already dead. That's huge. Or no, that, that was that their battle cruiser? No, that was their battleship. Have we sank their battle cruiser already, too? Am I missing something? No, that, that was their battleship. Their battle cruiser hasn't been identified yet. Never mind. I'm an idiot. We've got a good hit on a heavy cruiser. Please load AP with the mains. That is why we have SAP ballistic, please. Also, can we target these massive guns here? I would very much like to get rid of those big guns. Come on, New Jersey. Punch him in the mouth. Big hit. Love it. So far, so good. We actually overpinned their battle cruiser here. Come on now. There we go. There's a flood. All right, let's turn hard in. Huge hit. Huge hit on their battle cruiser. Got multiple floods on board. Guns are able to track. And we landed at shells again. Um, I have made mistakes. I thought these guys were like running out. They are not. We have torpedoes in the water all over the place, so we want to keep an eye out. Their battle cruiser's flooding. But he's still alive. We are taking some damage here. We got more floods on their battle cruiser. Hoping he goes down real soon. Not going to lie. You can see the secondaries doing their jobs here. Okay, battle cruiser goes down. That's big. We also... <clears throat> All right, let's focus on these two heavy cruisers that are by themselves. 
We got shots going out at the destroyers and light cruisers behind us. So far, so good. Can't tell where this was just okay, it just detonated, never mind. Big hits. Big hits on the, the heavy cruiser. Another massive hit. That's where this SAP ballistic coming in handy. All they all the like planning that we've or all the playing that we've been doing, the different campaigns, we've kind of got a pretty good feel for where the heck are those coming from? Can we not have that, please? Massive hit, and that's a flood. That's going to be it for him, right? Like, that was right up the old prop shaft. Devastating shots. And again, we're not trying to kill him quickly. We're just trying to kill him in general. So we're doing okay here. Another massive hit. We're going around the uh, torpedoes. Honestly, this, this battleship handles very well. There goes there goes their heavy cruiser. Huge hit. Down he goes. That's what we're looking for. 14-inch SAP ballistic, baby. All right. Now let's wrap around and deal with these little turd burglars that have been behind us. Now again, this is just us getting a feel for these challengers. If they go min-max and they win this challenge with very, very small designs, which they are very capable of doing, I'm sure, all of these guys probably have at least as many hours in this game as I do. So I'm I'm looking forward to this challenge series. I really am. Huge hit and a flood on the light cruiser. How quickly are they going to sink? Now, we know that light cruisers like to stick around. So let's take a look at our ship in action here. Get a little bit of a thumbnail moment going. And then I'll pull everything back up for you guys. Let's go ahead and speed up. We did take a little bit of flooding. We've got a little bit of water on board. But uh, it's okay. Now's the part where I'm actually starting to worry a little bit. But everything that's left is lightly armored. We've already killed their heavy cruisers. We've killed their battle cruiser we've killed their battleship everything is lightly armored so we should have no trouble t dealing with these threats with what we have left if we have to switch to he we can still absolutely annihilate these things so i'm pretty confident that we're going to win this challenge or at least we're going to win the the fight which allows us to be eligible for winning the challenge Secondary's kicking off. All right, let's try to get a little bit closer to these light cruisers. As you can see, they are fully stocked with torpedoes, as you'd expect. Huge hits on the destroyer. You can see that when they open up, those 5-inch guns with the SAP ballistic are doing some nasty things to those little turd burglars. We are outrunning the torpedoes, so I ain't got to worry about that. Down he goes. I misclicked and almost turned into torpedoes. It would have been devastating. Huge hit on the destroyer. Massive hit and a kill. You'll love to see it. I'm telling you, man, the SAP is where it's at when it comes to getting rid of ships in this game right now. There we go. Huge three floods on that light cruiser. That's going to be his death. Oh, unless he gets the... The hero... There it goes. He's down. I was going to say, he gets the heroic, like, emergency flooding stoppage that you get with light cruisers and destroyers. But no, nah, these, these guys got no chance. They're done. No chance at all. Beautifully done, New Jersey. Keep it going. 
Then there were two. Remember, it's incendiary HE, so we don't necessarily need to go to HE here. We can use our uh, SAP ballistic to, to do significant damage to these little turds. All right. Not bad. Not bad. That should be him dead. Capitan Mill. Is he going to get away with it? Well, he was, but he's not anymore. Good night, sunshine. Look at him. Somehow surviving the floods. This is what I'm talking about. There he goes. All right. Five-inch guns doing what they got to do to help. He just launched more torps. Let's go ahead and turn out. Try to get ahead of this torp spread, please. I don't think this guy is going to survive much longer. And down he goes. Beautiful. Well done, New Jersey. Well done. So, yeah, we definitely maybe could have squeezed a bit more tonnage off of this thing and gotten away with it. But I wanted the, the first thing. It's literally the first day back with a challenge series. I wanted to start off by showing that I can build a ship fully capable of defeating whatever challenge is set in front of us. And then we can start to figure out what the enemy is going to, uh, or I say what the enemy, what the other competitors are going to be doing. If they can if they can build ships capable of winning this competition at really small displacements that is going to beat us cuz we're at 37,809 tons of displacement. There's definitely plenty of meat on the bones there. So there's plenty of opportunities for these guys to to beat me. But I think we've got a pretty solid design here uh and we've at least set the bar, you know? We've set the bar for them. So again, I will try to get everybody's links to their channels and their videos for you guys. And if you guys enjoy, if you guys are excited for another uh, YouTuber competition challenge series, a little bit of a build off each week, let me know. And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you in the next video.